want you to be my wife and I want us to have children together. And she's like, oh shit, what you want? You said 25,000 in cash? Okay, I got you. And that's what I mean when I say the perfect scandal. It was a perfect scandal for everybody. And I wanna do this, you know, I'm just scared, you know, cause this ain't never been me. You know, I'ma take care of you, right? And he said another message, I will you up if you're playing with me right now. Are we shocked? Push Pranilla into a car and speed off. So and then let me out, let me out right now. That's my baby and that is uh, my baby's mother. And so she's like, okay, that can be a little awkward, but hey, if they comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable with it. What's up Team Jazzy? It's your girl Jazzy J and I am back with another mukbang. So today's true crime is gonna be about the perfect scandal. I saw this on Netflix. It's a documentary about, it's called um, Tinder, The Tinder Swindler, but I don't know, y'all know how my stories go. The bad guy don't always look like the bad guy. And I just wanna ask Tinder, who is the real swindler? So we gonna get into this true crime. It's crazy, you guys are in for a treat. And I normally don't do Netflix movies, but I was like, you know, if I retell this story, there's no way you can do spoiler alerts. That's how good Netflix put this together. It's still, even when you know the ending of the story, it's still really good. How they just show different characters and how it all came together. And then you had the sweet revenge at the end. So like I said, you guys are in for a treat. Even if you've seen it before, I'm gonna be giving pointers that can help us look at it in a different way way this video a big thumbs up on the simple fact that i have a vegan breakfast these are my favorite vegan um recipes which is the just eggs scrambled eggs um potatoes i just cut up some potatoes red pepper red onion parsley and just seasonings and garlics I got some Kite Hill cream cheese i really like their cream cheese with some english muffins and then i have some silk I have some silk dairy free yogurt. It's so good, it's the vanilla kind. And then I got the OJ on deck. So yeah, I'm gonna pray and start eating cause I'm hungry and I'm ready to talk about this. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the food that I'm about to receive. I ask that it may be nourished to my body. I ask that you bless the hands I prepared it and bless my entire team Jazzy, amen. Did I say team Jazzy in the beginning? I hope I did cause y'all know lately I've been forgetting. Yummy, did I show y'all this? Just in case, just in case. So the eggs are really good. The eggs is really good. They're, it's vegan eggs. And me and my kids be tearing it up. Mmm. We be tearing it up. It's really good with hot sauce. I forgot the hot sauce. So just imagine the most perfect scandal. I mean, so perfect that it's worth every risk you're about to take. And even after you get caught, it's worth to do it again and get caught again and again and again. That's how perfect, that's how genius, that's how master, criminal master mind this guy is. Mm. I'm hungry like always. All right, so. So, Shaman Hayut was born in Israel in 1990. Same year as me. And he was born in like, in poverty or maybe just like average but nothing like no no wealth or generational wealth or anything and but you know I would imagine that it was definitely a lot of poverty and just because of the measures he went to for money So by the time he was 15, he was over it. He had asked his friend like, can I stay with you and your family? Cause I'm having, I'm having 
problems at home. So of course you're my friend. We got extra room, so. So he moved in with his friend in New York. And two years later, they went on a family vacation and they left him there. They could trust him, right? He was about 17 at the time. He took their credit cards and he went to a different country. He rented out a Rolls Royce. He was staying in luxury hotels, like, he just maxed their car out, just living this luxury life, just to see what it would be like. Then he met this lady named Courtney, and he told her, I'm looking for a personal assistant. I'm rich, and I'm looking for a personal assistant. And was giving her stolen credit card information for her to spend in her name. She ended up going to jail for that, and he fled. She served two years in jail, and he just, on to the next, on to the next. So in 2010, he went to um, like a flying school to be a pilot. And he was also babysitting on the side. Well, he took that family's credit card information and was doing the same thing buying designer clothes, renting Rolls Royce, just living this luxury life off of somebody else's money. And by the time the couple found out, he had already moved to a different country and changed his name. So he moved to Europe and then he got on Tinder. And he used it to make women fall in love with him. Yo, these potatoes is hitting. These women would fall in love with him because he showed he had all this money, right? So I guess he called himself like getting back at gold diggers. Mm. So altogether, he ended up conning $150,000 from three women in Finland. And they all reported him to the police. So he ended up serving time. He did like three years. But like I said, when you got the perfect scandal, ain't no lesson learned. You know, even after the consequence, it's it's so it's worth that it's worth so much more than going to jail for three years. I would rather do this, have this type of life, and go to jail for only three years again. So in 2017, he was extradited to Israel uh, because of the babysitting scandal. So that caught up with him. So he had to do time in Israel too. Lesson learned, negative. So in 2017, when he got out of jail, he changed his name to Simon Leviev. 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 He named himself after the King of Diamonds. It is the, uh, his name is Lev Leviev. And he put on his Tinder account, on his little bio, that he was a son of a billionaire and he already got all these pictures because he's been stealing people's credit cards and living this luxury life since he was 15. He got designer clothes. Like he has all the proof that he needs to go onto this Tinder profile um, of him just living like this great life, helicopter rides, uh, chilling on a yacht, uh, luxury hotels. He was living his best life, okay? So this woman named Cicely is scrolling through t Tinder and she sees his profile. He's very good looking and he's living a great life, you know? And his bio says a billionaire son. And they actually matched. 
Now this woman was very interesting. She's an interesting, hopeless romantic. And um, in my opinion, um, a little immature for her fascinations of what you want your husband to be. I'm not laughing at her. Okay, let me just tell the story. So she sees this man and he has this luxury life and they match. And so she's like, okay, let, you know, let me see. Remind you, she mentioned that she's had a thousand matches on Tinder. So this is a woman that is desperate. And after a thousand, it just still, she hasn't found nobody. And so I feel like they have a lot in common already because they both are doing something over and over and over again. You know how they say the definition of insanity? That's, yeah, both of them basically are insane. And these are just my opinions. You know, he still got to come out with his side of the story. But thus far, from her interview, uh, she needed counseling before going on online dating. So we're going to get into that after I tell the story. So if you, if you watch the movie, when she's telling the story, she's reliving it. But as she's reliving it, she's really reliving it. Like stars in her eyes reliving it. And she said that he messages her and he says, I'm leaving London tomorrow. Would you like to meet up for coffee? She goes, sure, why not? R remind you, she's did this a thousand times, right? And so he's like, okay. He's like, I'm staying at the Four Seasons Hotel. Meet me there. So she said when she gets there, it's very nice. She said she instantly felt out of place because it's a nice hotel. Like she's this average woman and everybody else is probably millionaires in there. And so she's all like out of place. So she sits in the waiting area and she sees him walk out and he looks exactly like his pictures. He's dressed really nice. Like you could tell, like, I mean, Taylor fit. Okay. And she said that he shared his whole life story and he's showing her pictures of his daughter. And he's like, you know, she's only two, but um, you know, me and her mother didn't work out. So I'm just looking for love and, you know, just sold her this whole dream. And she's just like, oh, just like, you know, she's like, I'm here. I made it. And he was like, yeah, he was like, I am the son of Lev. And so he shows her a picture and he showed her a picture of him with his father and his mother, the whole family. He's like, you know, generational wealth. And, um, you know, it, we come from a family. We are in the, um, it is a family business. We are in a diamond, we are in the diamond industry. So, you know, we do, uh, we do a lot of deals with different countries and, you know, I'm the CEO and, you know, and so just selling it. And she's just like, oh, you know, and he's like, yeah, he's like, but I got to get out of here. You know, um, he's like, I got to get out of here. I, my, my private jet is waiting on me. You want to ride? And she's like, sure. I, I, you, you, I, and you know, it's really sad to say, because I'm like, We got to start using our common sense. So he's like, you know, just come down just for, for one day. And so she's like, okay. So she texts out her friends and she's like, I'm going on a private jet. And they're like, wait, what? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And she's like, yeah, it's okay. And somebody else was like, that sounds a little scary. Like, you know, please be careful. That kind of worries. So she hurry up and she pack her bag. But I, I'm still trying to get in the head of her. And I'm not shocked because a lot of women is like that. But all I got to say, remember the Ted Bundy case? He would have loved this era. Like, why are we so quick? Just because a man shows that he has money and he talks really well, you still don't know him. And she was hesitant on even doing this documentary because she didn't want people like me <laughs> judging her. But this is just what comes, this is what comes with it, you know? 
You either gonna share your story to bring awareness and deal with people's opinions, or you just gonna keep it quiet. And I think it, she did the right thing by sharing her story so that we all can learn from this. But anyways, she gets on this private jet and she's taking a picture. She kissed him on the cheek. She's known him for about three hours, guys. Like, and she's on the private jet with him. She's kissing him on the cheek. And they're like taking little cute videos. And she noticed that another woman and the baby, a baby is on the plane. And so he told her, Simon told her, was like, um, oh, that's my baby. And that is uh, my baby's mother. And so she's like, okay, that can be a little awkward. But hey, if they comfortable with it, then I'm comfortable with it. So then when they get off the private jet, Simon tells a chauffeur to take both of them, to drop both of them off. Well, so that meant that Cicely and the baby mom and the baby is all in the same car without Simon. So that's her opportunity to ask about him. So she did. And the baby mom was like, um, he's such a great dad. I'm so grateful for him that he still is choosing to support me and the baby, even though we're not together. And so she's just like, oh my God, he is too good to be true. And so she goes to whatever hotel he had her in and he shows up and they're in the bed cuddling and all that. And they did what they did. And she said she noticed that he had scars on his back. And she was like, well, what is that? I went to jail in South Africa and they tormented me in there because I'm Jewish. Just had this, like, he he was such a, he knew how to play with women's emotions. <clears throat> he knew how to make them feel good. He knew exactly what to say. He knew how to carry a conversation. And then he knew how to tug at their heart. And he told this story after they did what they did. So, you know, it, it's, it's, the, it's the mastermind to me. And she's just like falling in love more and more. And so he's like, okay, I got to get back to some business deals. I'm going to fly you back. She's like, okay. So she's just head over heels. But she's like, she also was thinking like, you know, it's probably going to be a little fling since we already did something. It's probably just going to like fizzle away. And so she just couldn't stop thinking about him. And so she texted him. She texts first after the first date. And she was like, I miss you already. I hope that you miss me too. So, of course, he's like, oh, I got this wrapped around my finger. And so he was like, yeah, I miss you. And she was like, oh, I'm so happy. He misses me. They always sent, like, pictures of each other. They always sent selfies to each other back and forth because he was just such a busy man, being a billionaire and all, you know, looking at diamonds and shit. <laughs> and so... He would always send her like pictures of him out to eat and like he would just send her like really nice pictures and be like, I'm out to eat with such a such. They were just head over heels for each other. And he was, he randomly one day was like, will you be my girlfriend? And she was like, I would love to be your girlfriend. Oh my God, we're official. And then he was like, I also want to move in together. And she's like, me too. I want to live with you. And so he's like, all right. He was like, go find a spot. He was like, our budget is 15000 a month. So she's out like looking for houses and she's like recording everything. Like, this is the kitchen. What do you think? This would be your closet. This would be mine. Um, you know, she's just like ready for this new life that all this hard work of swiping a thousand times on Tinder has paid off. And... She's like, this is our new house. And he's like, I like that one. I don't like that one. So they finally find one that they like. Well, everything is going good. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, he texts her. And it, it's been about a month of them dating. Only a month. A lot has happened in a month, right? So he sends her a text message in the middle of the night and was like, blood. Then he sent another text and was like, Peter is hurt. Peter was the bodyguard. I hope that's his name. Y'all know I'm not good with names. I'm here for the story. It's a story for me. And so Peter, we're going to say his name is Peter. Peter, the bodyguard, was hurt. And so she's like, what? What's going on? Then he sent her pictures of 
Peter in the ambulance and he has like stitches, like they're stitching up and he's just like bloody and he's showing a picture. He did a selfie and he's showing like he got blood on his shirt from Peter and he's just like, you know, he's talking to his girlfriend that something that just happened and he's just like, you know, I just, I'm so thankful for Peter because if he wasn't there, they would have got me. And she's like, who? So he's like, well, he's like, long story short, I am, I've been in danger. Um, you know, a bit, a diamond business deal went wrong. And now the Russians are after my whole family. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to scare you or anything. So I didn't tell you. He was like, but I have to, you know, be under the radar. And now they're saying I have to cut off my credit cards and, um, I have to, I have to delete my Instagram account. Um, but since you're my girlfriend, I need you to delete your Instagram account too. And she's like, oh yeah, no problem. Oh my God. Oh my God. So she's doing all this and she's moving so fast. And he's like, and I won't be able to spend money. I won't be able to maneuver around because they took all my cards for security reasons. You think you could apply for a credit card and then I just pay it off? And she's like, yeah, no problem. And so she signs up for an American Express card. She sends it to him. Um, he sends her these flowers and everything is back to being normal. Everything is good. And they're talking every day and they're meeting up every now and then. And so she did notice big purchases on there, but in her mind, she's like, okay, it's a purchase for a yacht. Must've been a business deal. Okay. It's a purchase for a luxury hotel. Must've been a business deal, you know? Cause she said she's been out to eat with him. Whenever they go out to eat, she was like, everybody knows him. They're calling him by his name and they're like, soon as he sits down they're serving him all these different appetizers like basically the whole menu is just sitting in front of him for him to just eat and so she knew what type of lifestyle he had and so she's like he got money he definitely gonna pay it back and so he ended up sending her a check for more than what he gave her so she's like okay cool well then something else happened he needed her to pull another loan but he was like i need twenty five thousand in cash it can't be no car and she's like why cash and he's like because it's untraceable and if they find me i don't want them to find you i love you so much i want you to be my wife and i want us to have children together and she's like oh shit, what you want you said twenty five thousand in cash okay i got you she and so he she flew to him Gave him 25000 in cash. She was so nervous because she's like, I hope I do not get caught by the airport, but I'm doing this for my man. And so she goes to the airport. She gives him the $25,000 and he's like, thank you. Thank you so much. And before they could even have a conversation, he was getting a phone call and he put it on speakerphone this time. And it was the bodyguard Peter and was like, they found out where you are. It's time to move. Move now. Move now. So he's like, I gotta go. She hears it on speakerphone. She was like, oh my God, oh my God. So he tells her, get back home. I gotta go. So they take off. Everybody scatter ways, they take off. So then about a week later, she's like, everything all right? You good? And he's like, yeah, I just need like 50,000. <laughs> and she's like, um, I don't know. Um, no, what happened when she was like, I'm really afraid to be hurt. Some, she saw something. Oh, she was like, she, um, a week later, she hadn't heard anything from him. Mm, so she's like, I know that he's busy. I want to respect him, but you know, I just miss him so much. Let me just check his Tinder account. So she checked the Tinder account and she realized he had switched pictures. Like, he has some new pictures. He took down some old ones, put up some new ones. And you know, she fantasizes about him a lot. So she knows exactly what his Tinder page looked like. She knows which picture is first, which picture is fifth, you know? And so she's like, I noticed that your Tinder is still up and active and we're in a relationship. I'm really scared to be hurt, baby. Please don't hurt me. And he's like, no, he was like, that's not me. He was like, see, they're trying to set me up. He was like, 
they're looking for me and so they're setting people up to get to me he was like don't believe nothing you hear right now he was like my motto is keep your friends close and your enemies closer she's like okay okay so then he's like yeah but um i just need about fifty thousand more and she's like huh she's like yeah he's like i really need you she's like She's like, but I've already pulled so much. She was like, I pulled so much money and credit and I'm just nervous and I have to pay this back. And he's like, you know, we're going to pay it back, baby. I just, I have to get out of this. I have to get out of this so me and you can have the life that I want with us. And so she's like, okay. And so she pulls out more money. She sends it to him and his things just ain't sitting right with her. And she's like, what are are you going to pay this back? When are you going to pay this back? He's like, I promise. I'm trying to sort things out. Weeks go by. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm really trying to sort things out. So she's getting upset. She's getting upset about him not paying the money back. And so he was like, come to me, come to me and I'll, and I'll hand you the check personally. So when they see each other, he gave her the check, but she said that he was like, he was like a little distant, like a little cold. And he gave her he gave her the check and it's about it's like whatever he owed her plus fifty thousand. And so she's just like, Oh, thank you so much. I knew you would come through. Oh, I just wanna say I appreciate you and da, 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 da. and she was just happy that it was a lot more. So she flew back home and she cashed she deposited into her bank account and you know, she's just thinking like, you know, three to four business days or whatever. So she waits about five days and she realized the money isn't fair, so she called them and they was like, Yeah, no, we're not we're not gonna do this. We're not gonna cash we're not giving you that money. And she's like, why? And she's, and they're like, um, because it's not a real check. And she's like, no, that got, there gotta be a mistake. So she calls him, he's not answering. And so she's trying to text him. She's leaving voicemails and he's voice texting back and was like, look, I did my part. I gave you the money back. Like now he's getting like, he's talking like sharp with her. And she's just like, her heart is sinking. Like, what in the world? I don't even care about the money. I just want my man. And so she's more upset at the fact that they not getting along and she ain't seen him in a while. Like, she's not even realizing. She's not even being real with herself. She is so in love with this fantasy that she is completely blinded by what is going on. So now, put a pen right there. Put a pen right there. Jumping over to a lady named Pernilla. She met Simon on Tinder, same exact conversation. He said, I'm leaving. You wanna grab coffee before I bounce real quick? She like, yeah, come on, come on. And she, her, the way she did her Tinder, she only wanted to match with guys that matched her lifestyle. She lived a luxury lifestyle, had Botox and stuff, like you can tell. So everybody on Tinder, I feel like Everybody picks and chooses by what it looks like. That's why I don't do online dating no more. Y'all know I've had my share. I have had my share of online dating. And I'm gonna get into that after I tell the story. But that is one of the reasons why I don't because it's so shallow and looks can be deceiving. And I can't even go off the vibe of you. You know, when somebody, when somebody addresses you in the club, at the grocery store, at the park, at a basketball game, you can go off of their vibe. You can see what shoes they got on versus online a picture anybody could stand there and smile and look decent and be cuckoo so anyways okay hold on hold on hold on, hold on. so pernilla she was looking for people who looked like her who had the same lifestyle as her and he was looking for people like her that got botox and looked like they live a luxury life so they was a match and they met up for coffee and she said he was so nice, charming. He knew how to have a conversation. She was like, but she was like, we just wasn't clicking. She was like, he did try to make a move on me, but I was like, you know, we're not really connecting. He was like, yeah, you're right. Let's be friends. She's like, okay, yeah, let's be friends. And I feel like she's smart. Um, She's very smart because it's like, you know, she didn't get head over heels just because he had money and could conversate. She was going deeper than that. And it was just something. She was going with her intuition. And it was something about him that she didn't feel like, oh, I could, 
I'm in love or this could possibly go somewhere, you know? And some girls, they, they, they settle for things because they want love so bad. Like the first girl, Cicely, she was like, you know, she looked past all the red flags of him inviting her on a private jet, him inviting her on a private jet uh, hours after meeting, like having sex on the first night out, like, she ignored all that just because of what he looked like on the outside versus the girl, versus Pr Pranilla, Priscilla. I done forgot the girl's name. Y'all know I'm not good with names. Versus Pranilla, she was like, yeah, no, I don't know. Let's just be friends. She was not in a rush. Even though she was on Tinder, she was not in a rush to fall in love to where she's just gonna settle for anything. If we ain't connecting, we just not connecting. And that's that's where I'm at too. But I ain't on Tinder or no online dating site. So anyways, he said randomly, he sends her videos of him like where he's at. And it looked really fun and nice and expensive. And she's just like, okay, you look cute. He's like, yeah, I just met my girlfriend here. She's amazing. So he sent her a picture of him and his girlfriend. And she was really pretty. She was a model. And he's like, oh, she is really pretty. But it, it didn't look like C Cicely. What was the girl? Did, did I call her Cicely? Cecilia. It didn't look like the first Tinder date. It didn't look like her. This was a different girl who was a model and was with him all the time versus Cecile. She's sitting at home crying because she worried that somebody about to steal her future husband and she's sending him money to get out of trouble. And so back to Pranilla, she like, oh, she's so pretty. I'm I'm from where y'all at right now. So let me come and show y'all around and stuff. And so all three of them hung out and they had a blast. Like, Pranilla didn't pay for nothing. Simon was swiping cars left and right. They was partying. They had a great time. And so after that, uh, after that night, they hugged each other and they was like, okay, see you when I see you. She said weeks later, Simon sent her pictures of the same exact picture he sent to Cecilia. And it had like a, where the bodyguard had a mark um, the bodyguard was in an ambulance and was stitched up and then he sent the selfie of blood on his shirt and was like, you know, I'm in danger. They're after me. I had to cut up all my credit cards and now I don't have nothing. I need some money. I hate to do this. I'm so embarrassed to ask, but do you think that I can borrow $30,000? And Pranilla is like, I literally, I literally just seen you blow a bag just on me. So this is the least that I could do. So she goes to her savings account, wipes it out, gives it all to Simon. He's like, thank you so much. I'm gonna look out for you, I owe you. I'm so grateful to have friends like you. And just the whole nine. So then weeks go by, and so he's like, hey, I have your money. He's like, he sent her a picture of a $50,000 check. She's like, oh my God, thank you so much. She go to cash it, same thing, not happening. So then he's like, oh, the bank must be closed. Hold on, let me figure this out. Well, in the meantime, somebody reaches out to her. Somebody sends her a Facebook message that was really weird. Now, put a pin in that. Go back to what Cicely over there crying and stuff. She called the bank and was like, please give me more information. They came to her house. Men in suits and briefcases came to her house and was like, what's going on? C Cecilia, I, y'all, I don't know this woman's name. Cecilia told the people exactly what happened with this guy and she did all this put credit cards in his name and he paid me back and now the check is bad and he's not answering no more i don't know where he's at he's he's the the son of a billionaire and they're like let me see a picture of him she showed him a picture of him and they both looked at each other and chuckled and was like yeah that's him He's been doing this for years and they can't find him because he keeps changing his identity. And so she's just like, oh my God. And so there was nothing that she could do. There was nothing that she could do. She's going to have to pay all that money back, get herself out of debt. So she's just like distraught, you guys. She, this part is very sad because it's just sad. He all of a sudden started calling her and threatening her. He said, I know where your mother lives. I've talked to your mother. Like, he's just like, I will hurt you. 
you know, and she's just like scared. And so she's driving down the street trying to figure out how to commit suicide. She checks herself into a psych ward and she's just like, you know, she's reflecting at this time and she just really cannot believe, like she's devastated. She cannot believe that she just got swindled like this. And so she called, so the more she starts reflecting, she's thinking about everybody involved. The little girl with the mother on the jet, the bodyguard, is everybody in on this or is it just him? Like, how do I get more information? She just could not let it go. And so she calls the bank back and she's like, please, is there anything that you can tell me? And so they said, okay, Google this name, uh, Shimon Hayut, which is his real government name. So she Googled it and that's when she found an article in the city, in the country that he's from, that he had did it to the three ladies in Finland and served three years in jail. But nobody could trace that back to him because he had changed his name after he got out of jail. And so I hope you guys are following me. And so she's brainstorming, how can I stop him from doing this to other people? And so she's like, okay, she said, I could reach out to, she was like, cause the, the police isn't helping, nobody's helping. So she's like, I can at least reach out to a journalist. So she reaches out to a journalist and they, she tells them the whole thing. So they start trying to help her. I mean, they went to work for her. They traveled to where he's from. They found his address, where he's from. And they they go up, they're knock on the door and they don't, um, and there's an envelope sticking in the door. And so they look at the envelope and it's addressed to him. So they're like, okay, we know for a fact this is his address, but the envelope just means that he's not there. Well, a woman, an old woman walks up and was like, what do y'all want? And they was like, well, we're looking for Shaman. And she, he was like, she was like, that's my son. And I haven't seen him in years. The last time I seen him was when he was 18. She was like, he just left. And so, they the journalist was like, well, do you know that he served three years in jail for uh for defrauding for defrauding women and he's still doing it right now? And she was like, I don't know what he's doing. She was like, but I believe it because he's been doing that since he was in his late teens. And she's like, now leave. And so, you know, it's hard to tell if she's covering up for him or if she's over her son. You know, they're kind of at a standstill. And so they're like, okay. So the journalist goes on his Instagram and they see um, in the same area, there was another woman that kind of looked like she was with him in one of the pictures. So they just took their chances and wrote her on, and they wrote her on Facebook. Now back to Pranilla, who was a friend who ended up just being friends and had that night out with him and his girlfriend. She is the one that the journalist wrote on Facebook and was like, hey, I just wanna reach out to you and let you know the person that you are hanging with is taking money from women and not paying them back. Remind you, Pranilla is in the same situation right now. He, he asked to borrow money. I gave it to him. He paid me back plus more. And now the check ain't going through. So she's, she's like, what? So she instantly sends it. She sends it straight to Simon. And so he was like, don't believe that. That's a threat towards me. I told you they're after me. I told you they're, the Russians are trying to get me. Um, I'm going to fix all of this. Don't you worry. And so she just cannot stop thinking about it. You know, she a little smart. So she like, nah, she was like, something just don't sit right with me. So she ends up meeting up with the journalist. And so they came up with the plan to set him up. So she calls him upset. The check not going through. The check not going through. You need to fix this because I got to pay these people back. Uh, you got to fix this because that was my money. And so he's like, okay, how about this? He was like, can we meet up? And I give you one of my watches. All of my watches are worth a hundred grand. They're worth a hundred grand. I would give you my watch. So she's like, all right, whole time, the journalist people is with her and they're secretly in the cut recording everything. So she goes out to eat with him. She flies in, she goes out to eat with him and he hands her the watch. And she's like, okay, thank you. They're talking. And so they go outside and so, as they're about to get into a car, they're walking with, she's walking with Simon and Simon's bodyguard. 
Well, as they're about to get into the car, Simon happened to look around and sees the camera being on him. So Simon starts talking in Hebrew to the bodyguard and he's like, like loud talking and stuff. And so Pranilla is scared at this point because she's like, oh my God, am I about to get caught? And what are they going to do to me? I don't know what he's capable of. And so they push Pranilla into a car and speed off. So now Pranilla has to get on her acting skills and she's like, oh my God, is the people following us? The people that's after you, do they know me? Do they know me? Are they going to follow me? And he's like, everything is okay. Everything is okay. She's like, do they know who I am? And she, and he's like, no. And she's like, okay, then let me out. Let me out right now. And she, he's like, okay. So they pull over, let her out, drive off. So she was safe from that. So Pranilla flies back home and she takes it to the pawn shop. And what do you know? It's a fake watch and it's worth absolutely nothing. Are we shocked? Are we shocked? So the journalist records her calling Simon. And she was like, Simon, can you just tell me the truth? He's like, I told you the truth. She's like, no, tell me the entire truth. He's like, I told you the truth. They're after me. And he, she's like, I know everything. So just tell me the truth for once. That's the least that I deserve. And he's like, uh, are you accusing me of something? Are you accusing me of something after everything? He was like, you play with my name, then it's payback. Like he just started threatening her. He flipped out and started threatening her. She was so upset, she hung up on him. And she's like, great, now I'm threatened. So they decided to come out with an article about it. And they also posted it on social media. And so it just slowly started going viral. Like everybody saw it because they had, they had all they ducks in a row. Like they show all these text messages. They show videos that they were sending back and forth. They show videos of... They, they showed that he sent the same exact text message, the same exact videos to the same two women. And this was the same guy that just got out of jail with a different name. He did all this again. So that so they were just trying to bring awareness to it because the police wasn't doing nothing about it. And the police was basically saying like they did want him, but they couldn't find him because he changed his name. He was just cut from country to country, changing everything. And so... What do you know? This article is going crazy. And a woman on an airplane sees this article right before she goes, right before the plane takes off. She runs into this article and she sees her boyfriend who she met on Tinder on this article. This is a whole new woman, y'all. I ain't talking about the last two. And she sends it to him and said, WTF. And before he could respond, she hurried up and downloaded the article and then put her phone on airplane mode. So the whole time, the whole time on the plane ride, she is reading this article and it sounds the same <laughs> way. Like they met on Tinder and it's the same messages, like the same message that he's sending to these two women. She's looking like, oh my God, she started going back to dates in her phone and was like, that was the night he said he was so tired, but that was the same night that he was sleeping with her. That's why he's so tired. And the business deal went bad and she also lended him money and he was taking forever to pay it back. So what he was doing was he was using Priscilla's money to pay for uh, Pranilla's money and impress her using Pranilla's money to impress the next girl to impress her using her money to impress her. And it was just like a trickle effect, you know, and, and we all winning. And this is the smartest cookie. This one, this girl was smart. This is the one that got the sweet revenge. So when she got off the plane, she said she already knew it was true. She said as soon as she got off the plane, her phone was going crazy. Simon blowing her phone up, right? And so... He's like, it's not true. They after me. I told you I'm in danger. They're trying to ruin my name because of my father's business, blah, blah, blah. Y'all, they've been dating for 14 months. 14 months of dating and I ain't met your family yet. Something's not right. Something is definitely fishy. You're a walking red flag, but this girl was smart. So she's like, 
I gotta pretend like I believe him. I gotta pretend like he's on my side because I want my money back. I'm gonna get my money back. And so, she, cause she already knew it's the fact that I lended it to him. No matter what he said, it's the fact that I lended it to him. The police is not gonna help me get my money back. I should have been smarter is what they're gonna say. And so he's like, that's why I need this money. Cause I have nothing. I have nothing. I need this money for something. And I need this money for that. And I need to go in hiding and da 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 da. And so he's like, please, baby, I need you to sell your house. I need you to pawn your car. And like, he just like really thinks that somebody is going to sell their house for him. Like, so she was like, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to get the money. Wait, I have an idea. You have all those designer clothes. Let me sell those for you. Cause she worked in retail. And so she's like, I know for a fact that I could sell those clothes for you and get you your money. We could, we could sell them. And so he's like, okay. She's like, and then, you know, I'll sell the house and I'll sell the car and then we have more money, but send the clothes, let, let, let the clothes be the first thing. So he's like, okay, cool. So they meet up. She, she said he didn't even help her pack it up. She said she packed up all of his clothes, three suitcases full of designer clothes that was at least worth $100,000. And she said she got in the car, she drove off, and a week later he called her, baby, I'm, I'm homeless now. Look at where I'm staying at. He was sending her pictures, like, look at what I'm eating. I'm eating leftovers from somebody. And oh my God, I'm not used to this life. Please hurry up and sell them clothes. She's like, I'm sorry, I haven't sold anything. Homegirl was ironing out every piece of clothes, hanging it up and selling it on eBay, any site. She was selling these clothes, Versace, Gucci, every designer clothing brand that this man had down to sunglasses. She was selling and keeping that money. In the middle of the documentary, she was talking and she looked at her and she said, ooh, and she was like, something just came through. I just got an offer on one of his clothing. So then like a couple weeks later, he blew her up, cussing her out. And the way to get him so vulnerable, the way he acted when he was so vulnerable was like, whoa. Like he had different personalities or something. Like he was like, you know, cussing around. Just he had a message that was just like full of anger and rage. And then the next message would be like, I love you so much, baby. And I want to have a family with you. And I want to do this, you know, I'm just scared, you know, cause this ain't never been me. You know, I'm gonna take care of you, right? You know, and it was just like, oh my God. Then he said another message. I hope you're not fucking with me, bitch. I will fuck you up if you're playing with me right now. I feel like you're playing me. Like, and so. And so she's writing him back like, you're being so dramatic. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. And so he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just like, you know, I'm stressed out and they're after me and I went in hiding and now I don't have no money and And it's just like, if you're a billionaire, you won't have some money somewhere, you know? If it's generational wealth, they always have a plan of escape. They always have that security net and when I run out of money, I'm not going to ask anybody I met on Tinder for money. And if I have a lot of money, I'm not even going to be on Tinder because women is going to be lined up at my door. Women going to be on the waiting list. I'm not going to have time to go to Tinder. All right. Back to the story. Because I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. Because it's just like... They're not dumb. They're not dumb. They are just hopeless romantic, desperate for love, and... They believe in this fairy tale where your knight in shining armor is just going to come and sweep you up off your feet and don't even know you. Like, we have to be realistic, guys. We are all human. And yes, men is the ones that's supposed to hunt us down and chase us, but we have to vet them. We have to be smart and wise and vet them. Just because somebody is a billionaire doesn't mean that he, he can just take you the first night to a different city. Like... That's bananas, but it happens every day. It happens every day. And women like these women have to learn the hard way because now this man is not made to pay them back. And ain't nobody making him pay them back. 
because they the ones that lended the money. They have to pay all this money back. It was a it was a total of ten million dollars that he took from them. And he only served five months in jail. But how he ended up going to jail was because the last smart one that I'm talking about right now, she she called the police and was like, I just text him and his the message didn't say delivered. So that means that he's on an airplane because his phone is always active. I don't care how broke he say he is. He going to have that phone on. <laughs> and so the fact that his phone is not saying delivered means that he's on a plane. So she looked up. She looked up every single flight coming from where he at. And she figured out where he was at, caught the police and was like, he's getting off of this plane at this airport. And they picked him up as soon as he got off of the plane. But he, like I said, he ended up only serving five months in jail due to Corona. He, he, he got sentenced 15 months in jail. But um, due to Corona, the pandemic, all that, he only ended up serving five months in jail. And now he is back to doing the exact same thing, you guys. He's, he's back to being on social media. He's back driving Lamborghinis, living a luxury life. He has a model girlfriend. Like he's, he is living the exact same life that he was before. And I have to say, and that's what I mean when I say the perfect scandal. It was a perfect scandal for everybody. Because the girl, Cecilia, this is my opinion. My opinion is that you got a thousand swipes, right? So why is it that you banked on him? Then at the end of the documentary, I mean, cried tears and this man destroyed you. You in debt forever at this point. And you smile and said, yeah, I'm back on Tinder. Like it was a... It was a commercial for you. Like, yeah, everybody, <laughs> uh, here goes my Tinder. Like, I'm back on there and, you know, I ain't lost faith in love. And it's like, no, nobody's supposed to lose, lose faith in love, but you're not even confident in yourself that you, you can meet your husband locally. The fact that you have to be on Tinder, because I feel like Tinder is... Tinder was made to sell a dream and that's why online dating apps are so successful. And that's why I don't do online dating anymore is because, you know, I realize get getting approached. I get approached more when I'm in my pre in my in my physical form outside like, you know, in the midst of human interaction, you can get approached more and it's just better cuz you have the the conversation. I don't know if this nigga got I mean, I don't know if this guy has a lisp. Like, you just, it's different. And so I realized, you know, I switched it over. And I'm like, I don't need online dating because men approach me outside. So wouldn't that be the same for a guy? Why would he go through this whole process of online dating if he's really looking for a wife? He, he doing it the right way. Why would he go that far to do a whole profile if it's easy for him to get women outside of that. That means he ain't getting no women and that means something wrong with him. If a man cannot walk up to a woman and be and approach them and actually get uh, and actually be successful with it. So instead he goes to an online dating because if you're more successful on online dating than you are physically dating, that's a red flag to me. That is a red flag to me. And I'm just like, no. You know, I was on online dating during COVID um, right after I left my relationship and I learned my lesson real fast, real fast. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't take me long, but look at the extreme that this woman went through and she said, I am back on Tinder. That is so sad to me. That is so sad to me because it's like, Everybody's insane. Y'all both went back to the same thing that y'all was doing because the lesson just wasn't great enough or something. This man in and out of jail and he still th the same things that he was doing. This woman, fresh out of a heartbreak, you tried to kill yourself and you, <sighs> that's insanity for you. Doing the same thing, hoping that you'll get a different result. And Tinder, they know what they doing. Like these online dating apps, they know what they doing. They, these online dating apps, they the real swindlers. Because if I had it set up to where 
you're gonna meet, you're, you're meeting your significant other, then it, it wouldn't be as successful. But I feel like these online dating apps prey on desperate, hopeless, romantic women. And they prey on men who are lazy and don't wanna, they wanna do the bare minimum. And it makes it easier on the man. You know, he don't got to do a lot of chasing because it's like, I already know that you want love. So it's, it's going to make it real easy for me. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like it's a setup for failure on both ends. And the only people that win is the people that created the online dating app. And so then Tinder going to make an announcement talking about, yeah, we don't allow him on the site no more. Yeah, y'all got to say that because it's a business. And you want people to continue to come to your app. But because this has went so viral, now it's a, it's a panic of what the future may hold. P nobody's going to want to go to Tinder because they're scared there's going to be people like him. So let me let everybody know that he's not allowed back on here. But there's a million people that is just like him that's on there. I've seen it myself. There's YouTube videos teaching men how to get women who are desperate, teaching men how to make their Instagram account look like they are rich. So that's why we as women got to be smarter. We have to be smarter and stay covered with the armor of God and 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 use our wisdom and properly vet a man. Hey, I can go on and on. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Post notification goes to... Thank you so much for having your post notifications on. Shout out to you for being the first to comment on the last video. If you would like a shout out, all you have to do is be the first to comment on the next video. If you would like to see more true crime videos, then click right here. If you would like to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss another video, then click right here. I love you and I will see you guys in the next month. Bye.